Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Siratori. Bonnie Siratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com. And I'm Cynthia, the co-host. Today, we'll be talking about grief. And we're specifically going to be talking about all the different components and that could cause grief in a person and even the different areas that we may store grief. And I know that Bonnie has a clearing coming up called the well of grief. So we're going to get deeply into that later in this podcast, which is, a, I'm guessing, is a, is a particular area that we store grief and that you definitely want to focus on that if you want to really clear up deep, deep grief. So Definitely stay till the end to hear about that. My first question is about, you know, most people, they when they think of grief, they associate it with a feeling of loss, or maybe they've lost a partner or a different loved one, a pet, a job. And this is like, this is usually associated with specifically with like an external thing, a st- external situation. But I know with you, Bonnie, you really like to get to like the core of everything. And so I guess Mm -hmm. what I'm asking is, since this feels to me like there's so many components to grief, really, what would you say is like really at the core of it so we could hit it at the, you know, as efficiently and effectively as possible to clear up grief? Like what is really at the core of grief? Basic bottom line is feeling unloved, feeling like you're not loved, okay? And that can happen beginning in the womb, like sometimes, you, you can also be taken on your, your mom's grief, but basically grief really is about a deep, deep sadness, a deep feeling of despondency, uh, a deep feeling of, of um, heartache, heartbreak. Uh, it's a sad. And when I look at people that, with the really deep, dense grief, it, ultimately it goes back into that feeling that they're not loved. You see, remember this. You know, where we to survive, we need love, you know, to be loved. When we're loved, then we're fed, we're taken care of, we're nurtured, we're touched, we're held, we're, you know, there's that whole connection thing. But when, when there's not, when there's no feeling of love, then especially like with infants, they need that kind of bonding. I mean, they've done major studies on, on babies and, you know, babies not being touched, babies being touched, held and all of that. And the difference it really does make. I mean, some babies will, it even, it even affects their growth, you know, it affects their development when they're not loved and, and held and nurtured. So oftentimes when I look at people, all I do is look in their eyes. I don't even have to look psychically. I just look in their eyes and you can see grief and sadness in people's eyes. And it really is about that feeling that, you know, we're not wanted, we're not, we don't belong, we're not loved. And then it goes into like, you just don't matter. You're not enough. And it, it just, it, it just permeates our entire being. And, and then, then we have experiences on top of that, like you're saying, like loss and abandonment and rejections and betrayals. But those, those are coming on top of that deeper grief, that gr- deeper grief feeling of sadness, you know, not, of not being loved, you know, not really being wanted and, in that feeling, I mean, like so many people have it, you know, it's like, it happens in the womb. So for different reasons, like, for example, like with a mom, maybe it's a young mother, and she's nervous and afraid. And she's fearful that she doesn't know how to be a mom, even in that that's going to cause the, the fetus growing in the womb to experience, you know, uh, an anxiety, uh, uh, like a not quite safe and uncertainty. Then sometimes you have moms that don't want to have a baby or don't want to be pregnant. It doesn't mean that they don't love, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean that the love doesn't happen, but it's those initial beginning stages. And then also if you have a mom who's got her own wounding, which unfortunately every human being does have some kind of wounding around being loved. So they don't know how to express love. You know what I mean? It becomes like a possession, your mind and Or, you know what I mean? There's all these different reasons why people feel that sense of uncertainty around being loved. And it really does start in the womb. 
and we are deeply affected. But then let's take it to the to the real truth, and it's all coming from carryover as well. Okay, because so for example, let's just say that finally, after many lifetimes of feeling unloved, that that I pop through with the knowing, all right, I am loved because it's really about loving myself and I find that place of self-love and I really open the heart. And so my next incarnation, I'm not going to choose a a soul partner, a soulmate to, to make me feel unloved. You know what I'm saying? Saying I'll come in with a, a soul friend, soul partner, and that will have that a capacity ability to feel love because they they also feel self love. So then it changes the whole dynamics. It changes the whole setup of coming into the world, into the body, and the kind of life that we're going to have. But what people don't understand is when you're in that womb, when you're developing in the in your mother's womb, again you're taking on her energy, but you're also interpreting her emotions and you're taking it personal as though it's all about her. So her fears are not ability to trust, feeling afraid in the world and her, her places where she doesn't feel love. So all of that is just getting anchored in and seeping into the subconscious of that, that baby, that fetus that's growing in the womb. And, and then we're born into the world and here we are. And the, and then think about this, you know, Babies, when they when they're first born, they've been in this womb, and then so now you take them out and you leave them by themselves. They're gonna feel rejected. They're gonna feel something. Okay, you know what I mean? It's like they just it's like that whole connection, that bonding that we have. So it doesn't matter how great of a parent you are. I mean, there's been lots of different studies as well, different ways, different techniques to raise a baby. I've got people that. They never put the baby down ever. You know what I'm saying? It never, it was never down for a couple of years. It was always held either, you know, contain something so that it was always connected, always bonded with the other mother, father. And, you know, so different ways of making the baby just feel you're connected, you're bonded, you're loved, that type of thing. But that's not the norm. You know, people let the baby down and the baby gets, you know, gets hungry, dirty diaper, whatever, uncomfortable, tummy aches, you know, all these things. And, you know, so it it just adds to those places of discomfort and feeling um, not being uh, cared for, you know, so again, it hits those deep places. But the biggest one for everybody, when I look in their eyes, I just see the sadness, I just see a sad and almost all of humanity, seriously, rarely do I see someone who doesn't have some degree of sadness. I'm serious, okay? And I've met thousands of people and, you know, in the work. And it's really about that that place of feeling loved. And without that, then there is sad, or just a sadness, you know, because we, as humans, we have a propensity to unite. We need connection. And usually that the people that you that we hear about or we know about or even that we are ourselves where we isolate we're hermits we're you know what i mean we we're um uh, you know we go into these pulling away from society going away and living by ourselves or whatever that that happens because of those sad places those feelings that were not loved you know so we can't, you know, there's a sensitivity. There's a lot of people that I call sensitives and they, everything is so intense for sensitives and the feelings and emotions, they just are deeper, bigger for people that just take everything personally and feel things and, and, and can't live, be in the world. So then we begin to isolate. So again, these are not normal behaviors and it wouldn't be that way if the person felt wanted, belonging, loved, and they were, you know, enough. So without that, people are going to feel sad. So about that, Bonnie, when you talk about how um, the connection piece is so important. So when people actually have, like they lose a loved one, is it that feeling like they lost that love from, from that person? Is that what kind of brings them further into grief specifically, or is it many other components around that? I'm, I'm trying to understand yeah. like when you lose a loved one, that part. And when you lose it, when you lose one, yeah. someone, whether it's a beloved lover, uh, husband, ha- wife, mother, father, children, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's very intense. Children when losing child is very intense, but 
um, basically it's that loss. It's like, it's like this, you know, here we are, we we're in the world and we, you know, when someone's here, we can, we can touch them. We can talk to them. If they're not close by, we can call on the phone or nowadays we can do the visual thing, but there's that, that whole beingness of knowing that they're here. Okay. When that's not, when they're no longer here, there is an absence of this dimension of this reality that is, they're not, that's no longer accessible. It is gone. Okay. That causes that feeling of profound loss. Okay. They're gone. Never, never again, will you ever see them. And, and there is a sadness in there, but I also talk about and help people to, to um, open the heart because even when we feel that we start to close the heart down to whoever that is like losing a mother or father. Okay. And, and at that loss, they're gone. And so there's that knowing in our psyche and our unconscious that they're gone. We will never see them again. We won't be able to touch them or talk to them in any way. Okay. Game over. Okay. That creates a lot of energy in, within our own body. And, and if we can keep the heart open, because what happens is when we start to feel that loss or we feel that hurt, we, we, we close the heart down and we withhold or pull back on the feeling of love that we have for the one that we have lost. Okay. But that also, then that also compounds the pain. Okay. But the key is keep the heart open, keep loving them, even though they're not here. It will bring up even more pain. It'll bring up even more wounding. And it's really all about us keeping our heart open, keeping our heart open so that we can continue to feel the love that is, with, is within all of us. And another component that's really important to a reminder, because I've talked about this many times, is love isn't coming from out there. When we feel love, it's coming from within. Okay, so when I'm thinking about my mother, father, whoever I'm thinking about, and I feel love, it isn't coming from out there, it rises up from within. So when we when we have sadness, we, there's a tendency to, you know, we contract, so we're pulling in. So even even with an infant or a baby that feels unloved by the mother or father, or feeling unloved, there is a contraction that begins to happen. There's that pulling in instead of that beautiful light opening of wonderment and sharing and just uh, that whole frequency of love that we are, we begin to contract. And then when we contract, then we begin to block our own ability to feel the love. Okay, then we're looking for it out there. This is that whole thing, looking for love, you know, outside of ourselves. And we've learned to do that. It's like, we didn't, we, we, now we don't feel it here. Oh, so it's got to be coming from out there, but it's not coming from in here because we got it blocked. Okay. Cause we already got sad, sad. We're already feeling unloved, you know, in the womb of mother, we're already feeling that sense of, I don't belong. I'm not wanted. I'm going to be killed. I'm going to die. You know, something bad's going to happen. I, you know, I don't belong. I'm not enough. Something's wrong with me. You know, we, it's like those conclusive conclusions that we make. And then we, pull in, shut the heart down. And again, it's like looking out there for acceptance, for approval, for acknowledgement, for am I okay? Do, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just, and this is our, our whole world. All of, all of humanity is outside looking out there for everything. Rarely do I see people who are sourcing from within. Thank you, Bonnie. You did mention a lot of uh, great points about all the different emotional components. People, when they start to want to really go deep into healing their grief, they could take a lot of those pointers and, and um, you know, pinpoint um, or really target those issues. For example, you talked about uh, closing the heart. So something that people could do to start moving their grief and shifting and clearing it is to do maybe some of the clearings you have on opening the heart. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm perhaps that would help. Um, also, things like feeling unloved. Maybe if you want to shift your grief, um, you could look at the spiritualacceleration.com. There's so many, there's hundreds of group clearings. So mm -hmm. maybe look at different components around your grief and get those as well. There is also a, I think you have one 
in the shop called you have a healing holiday grief, but it's obviously going to help with it. It doesn't have to be just holidays. So that's one that people could look at too. But I do have questions, Bonnie, about specific places within our bodies or in our subconscious or energy fields where grief is typically stored. And I, from what Mm -hmm. you've said before, I think there's two spots, um, the sacral chakra and a, 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 thing called the well of grief which I think is very interesting when I first heard you talk about the well of grief in an old group clearing in my mind I always thought it was like a kind of like a hell realm or a purgatory realm that we're tethered to or something <laughs> and like <laughs> demons are in it and stuff. that's the impression I had um, but then when we actually uh, when you actually talked about it to give a description about it for the copywriter I was like oh it's a lot it's quite different but it's still very intense it's not as you know what I thought I was imagining you know that movie the ring with the girl coming out of the well yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. what was in my yeah. mind but but uh please let us know what what really is um the well of grief. yeah I guess I maybe, mean, can you start with yeah. the second well the second chakra and the well of grief of maybe could you yeah the second chakra yeah. definitely the second chakra is basically the carryover of past lives, uh, of all the grief stuff, sad, you know, all that emotion. Think of the second chakra as that emotional energy frequency that holds lifetimes of all your emotion. Now, you can actually hold grief or sadness in different anywhere in the body, meaning, you know, maybe for some reason, um, I pushed it down to my elbow, you know what I mean? (laughs) So it can be it can lodge in different parts of the body as well. And when we're really looking for the unraveling and healing and clearing of deep, profound sadness and all the carryover and all the the grief, sad, despair, despondent, all of that deep, profound feeling of of sad grief, that's the second chakra is where we're going to find all those components. Okay. So if I'm looking for that and I start clearing the grief, the deep sadness in that second chakra, it's also going to start clearing the, sh- the grief in other parts of the body as well, okay? Now, the, the well of grief, I, I discovered the well of grief. This was in, what year was that? 1980, 88, 1988, I rem- yeah. It was, I remember specifically who it was. I remember exactly what the office I was in, where I was at, it was in Auburn, California. And I was tracking something in her because she, she was a lot of sadness. And man, I just saw it. And it, it literally looked, I'm not, that's why I called it the well of grief, because it was almost like this, this energy, like a, like, like this, like a, you know, round like this coming from looking down, but round like this coming all the way through. And it's like, it's in the core, you know, the core of our being. And it looked just like a well. And there was so many layers upon layers lifetimes and layers of all this sad grief energy that was just anchored in deeply anchored in and it was different than like that second chakra stuff you know there was something different that it was just deeper it was darker it was blacker it was more condensed so you know on top of on top of on top layers upon layers upon layers whereas in that chakra you know the there's, there's lots of energy, but it isn't just sad. It's all the emotions. Okay. So think about that. Second chakra, all emotions. Well, of grief, sad, 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 sad emotions. Okay. Not all the other emotions that we have, but it's only the deep, sad stuff that causes us to feel depressed that causes us to feel like despondent or helpless and hopeless okay so it's that kind of thing so if you think about second chakra think about all the the whole multitude of emotions of the human being are all there the sad is in that well of grief so that's the major difference so everybody has their own well of grief is that right Yes. Okay. And it will be uh, meaning what will happen is depending on your soul's journey, what you've carried, what you have not uh, known yourself in, what you haven't fully opened to, ex- to know, whatever that is, you're going to have it 
you know, the, 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 the sad stuff is all going to be in that well of grief. And there'll be layers, you know, layers upon layers. And, and what happens too is, for example, um, like even loss does create, like if you lose your beloved, someone you truly just madly in love with and you lose them, great loss, great pain, great heartache, okay, dark pain, despair. So what happens though is, again, if we haven't cleared and released these emotions, they carry over. We bring them into this incarnation and then whatever we haven't cleared is still there. So then we have all these lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of all the emotions in the second chakra, but the grief, the well of grief for lifetime upon lifetime of unhealed, unknown, because we didn't open the heart, go through the extreme excruciating pain of these emotions losses, whatever's, and it, it gets anchored in. So then now we're, we're living life. I mean, if you can have a baby come in into this world and still have loving parents and not really have any bad traumas, and I can look in their eyes and still see the sadness because it's carried over, you know, carried over from past incarnations. So this, this whole sad thing, it's just like, you know, the clearing out the well of grief. That's why doing the clearing that we're going to be doing on the well of grief. It's going to be huge, huge for people. Yes. Yeah. And that clearing is coming up July 28th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely want to register for that. Of course, this is a live one, but there's always a replay. Mm -hmm. And it's just as effective yeah. in the replay as well. Yes. And you also yes. have a sacral chakra small group energy clearings and do you want to talk a little bit about the difference between the uh the chakra series that you have and the older other um, small group energy clearings that you offered before mm -hmm. yes big difference actually so with the small group energy clearing it's a, it's a group of people usually about five possibly eight people um but what happens is, is everybody fills out the questionnaire, you know, whatever, whatever their uh, issues are. Okay. I don't need, I don't want no story. I just need just a brief, like, okay, yes, I want to heal, whatever. Uh, loss of father, loss of mother, whatever. Um, so what happens is in the, in the small group energy clearing, uh, I take um, about seven minutes, depending on if there's five people or eight people, each pre, if it's a larger, a little bit larger than it's a little bit less time, but basically about seven minutes per person where I focus on what they wrote about. And then I move on to the next person. So you've got a group of people and what's happening is you're getting the benefit of everyone's clearing of those people, what their issues are. And then at the end, I do a, another activation, visualization, clearing, uh, uh, experiential thing at the end. And everyone, you know, has the benefit of, of everyone's clearing. So the difference is with the chakra series, and I just feel like this, the chakra series is profound, but what happens is, is we have more people. I think we're, we have up to maybe 14, maybe 16. I can't remember, but everyone does write their stuff. Everyone does write again in the questionnaire. What I do is I read them and I extract components, you know, issues out of everybody. And then what happens is when we get, when we start the clearing, I've already got my notes and I've already got like clear, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever those the things are. Um, uh, then I'll, I, I start doing the clearing in that chakra. So I'm specifically in that chakra the whole time, clearing out everything that each person had an issue with. But what's so cool is you've got all these different people with all the same, sometimes same, sometimes different, but many different things that are all in that second chakra. So I am blasting out and I'm just going through the list and I'm not focusing on any one person at, at all. I'm, I'm, it's total an hour, full hour of clearing out all the, the particulars that people have written about in that second chakra. People are blown away. They're like, you know what I mean? It's like they're just reeling from the clearing because it was just hitting so many different pieces. Remember, same in you, same in me. Okay. I mean, I might, I might write about one thing, you know, that I want help with and everybody else will be writing about what they're wanting help with. 
it's always somehow different in a sense, you know, like different issue, different, different scenario, but I'll go through that list and clear out, clear out, clear out. And so people are just being reamed basically that second chakra of all this emotional energy coming out. So it's, it's a huge difference. I mean, they're both very potent and powerful because again, like I said, you know, in the, in the small group clearings, then I am focusing on an individual and everyone's getting the benefit. But when I'm doing that, the chakra series, man, I'm just hammering it. Boom, 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 da, 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 you know, clear, clearing all that energy. So people, you know, that's like a whole, that energy clearing, it just clears out so much really fast. It's very powerful. So different, yeah, I've, they're different. I've done the replays. I saw the replays of the last time you did the series and they're mm -hmm. really incredible. It's, it really is a whole hour of just intense. And most of the time I'm, I'm a, I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards it's like whoa <laughs> yeah, yeah so it was really yeah. those are really really good and they're starting up again yeah. but you can yeah, buy seven all chakras. of them yeah you yep. i think it's 20 percent off for all of it if you want to buy if you buy the entire uh, if you buy on seven you're gonna at once you get 20 percent off yeah or you yes. know you can just do each one but i have to tell you all every every chakra is different and it's, you know, we want to get these energy centers cleared out. We want to get them unraveled and activated and healthy and get the good colors in there. It just, it's just, you know, beneficial for the well-being, total well-being of, of who we are. So, I, yeah, it's just, they're very, it's powerful, potent. Yeah. So everyone, all seven chakras, those are the main chakras, main energy centers in the body that we clear out, carry over. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Do you have any final words on grief that you'd like to leave with us? Yeah, grief, I mean, it's one of those things. Everybody's got it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like everybody has, has grief at some point in their world, in their life. And again, you know, we, it's like the thing that I, I do want to say something about this. When we are feeling grief and we're crying a lot, you know, like sometimes people will cry for years, Cynthia. I did. Okay. Um, and what's what the reason you're not moving through it, the reason it's not shifting and changing is because there's not the surrender to knowing it so fully that you are, are the grief. You are that pain. See, most people are, they're still telling the story. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, like, for example, with me, my dad, he died when I was 16. I wanted, I love my dad and he, you know, I never, we never saw him. He was kind of like my mom and dad, they were both left us basically. And so I always longed for my dad and there was all, while he was alive, there was always that hope that, you know, I, I, got, I got my dad someday. Well, when he died, that was gone. And all I wanted was my dad. So story, I miss my dad, my dad, I want my dad. And I would cry I, almost every night of my life for about 10 years. I was still crying for my dad until finally I realized, oh, you can't, it's not about the story. It's about coming in and fully embracing and feeling all the emotion that's there, absent the mind thoughts, becoming it so fully that literally you think you're going to die or literally you feel your heart's breaking, shattering, and you're feeling it shattering. You still, you keep going. This is what it's about. We, we have to embrace our own sadness, our own grief fully to know it. So we don't keep bringing more and more and more grief to us. But the good news is, is once we've literally gone through this depth of grief and sadness that's in us by the activation of, you know, someone else, it doesn't mean that we'll never feel sad or grief again, but somehow the, the depth of it is different. And even if we lose a cherished one, um, we can, we now know how to go through it because lose, like, for example, losing a child, that's going to be devastating. And yet the heart can mend it can lighten and then what happens is rather than ha having a hard time thinking about it because it hurts too much then there's the thoughts and remembers and remembering them and loving them and 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 feeling a different sense of connection with them rather than that oh my god it's just shattered and i can't handle it even the thought of that that person you know so it shifts and changes because now we are fully knowing the sense of what, what griefs, what great loss, great sadness, feeling, uh, whatever that is, we now know it. We're not trying to get away from it, rise above it, you know, trying to avoid it, 
push it down. Don't go there. No, we are in it. We are in it so fully that we are that emotion. We are knowing it so fully. And then the energy shifts and changes. And then our relationship to that emotion is never the same. So there's a difference between crying, crying, story, story, mind, mind, you know, thinking, thinking, as opposed to fully dropping in. Big difference. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to today's episode on grief with Consciousness Unleashed podcast. I will leave links to all of the the clearings that I mentioned in today's podcast, including other ones that I think would be really good to help people move through grief, ones that maybe people won't look at because it doesn't have the word grief in the title, (laughs) right? Um, So I will (laughs) leave links to ones that I think would be really beneficial for people who really want to shift and clear grief. But definitely join us for the Well of Grief Clearing. This is calling, this is one is called Clearing the Well of Grief. That's July 28th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And thank you again so much, Bonnie, for this awesome episode. And thank you for everyone for listening. Once again, like this video, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you think. If you are on Apple, please leave us a review. Thank you so much. Bye.